Hello, this is Aiden Scott, EMS Program Manager for EMS University in San Antonio, Texas. We're going to take a look at uh, Lesson 3-11, Ambulance Operations. First, we're going to take a look at your, the laws that uh, encompass uh, operating an ambulance. First, you need to observe and respect consistently uh, the other drivers on the road. You must make sure your driver's license is valid um, in order to operate the ambulance under um, a priority situation with lights and sirens. It must be a true emergency, um, not just because you want to get to the hospital fast and get the patient offloaded. Uh, you have to use your warning devices. Again, lights and sirens have to both be in operation. Uh, due regard. If you do not exercise due regard for the safety of others, you are liable for the consequences um, if anything happens. If you cause an accident, even if you aren't involved, you are still liable. So you always have to be very careful. Um, exceeding the speed limit um, is not generally, if you're in normal operation, exceeding the speed limit is not acceptable. Um, if you are operating lights and sirens, you can only exceed uh, about five miles an hour over. So always be aware of, of the speed limits. <clears throat> always be um, aware of your school zones um, and uh, respond accordingly. Um, there are some laws, I believe it is just about nationwide nowadays, um, if you are running um, with lights and sirens and you enter into a speed zone uh, a school zone you must shut down your lights and sirens until you exit the school zone as well as abiding the uh, speed limit set ordinances familiar self familiarize yourself with local ordinances always be aware of your local um, laws uh, especially regarding regarding lights and sirens. Um, again, if, if you run into something like a school zone, be aware of what the local ordinance is about running lights and sirens through school zones. Uh, also, consider uh, communities. If it's 3 o'clock in the morning um, and you're going through a neighborhood, uh, you don't necessarily need your siren um, running. Uh, you know, be aware of your surroundings. Basics of good driving, always wear your seatbelt. It will save your life if anything happens. <sighs> use your signals. Even if you're operating under emergency traffic, uh, use your signals. Let the people around you know exactly what your intentions are. Uh, it'll make things safer for you, your patient, and the people around you. Look both ways. Always, again, be aware of your surroundings. Um, before you enter into traffic, always make sure that traffic is clear. Um, if your partner just happens to be up front with you, um, have them clear your uh, blind spots. Also, consider your driving conditions. Um, you know, if it's raining, you know, you need to slow down a little bit. Be a little more cautious. If it's icy, um, snowing, always keep those in mind. You want to be more cautious. Um, in adverse driving conditions. Maintaining control. Uh, <clears throat> you want to be sure that you maintain control while braking. Um, always have both hands on the steering wheel. Um, road conditions, again, always be aware of, you know, wet conditions. Be more cautious. Um, you could very well go into a skid, in which case always steer into the skid. Um, remove your foot off the accelerator and slowly depress the brake. Don't slam on the brakes though. Um, your higher speeds, it does become more difficult to maintain control, especially in an ambulance. Um, they are large vehicles um, and they don't exactly stop on a dime either. So you, you need to be um, aware and, and always uh, do your best to maintain control of your vehicle. 
uh, obstacles uh, in the roadway or um, uh, any kind of obstacle really um, you know you want to be sure that you allow enough response time uh, to try to avoid any obstacles um, when you're backing your ambulance always have a backer um, this is actually company protocol for most services nowadays um, if anything happens while you're backing and you don't have a backer you're liable um, plus it's added damage to your unit that that you know it can be prevented so always have a backer when you're en route to the receiving facility make sure all doors are closed and secured uh, always make sure you know your doors are locked uh, begin your ongoing assessment even when you're driving you're always doing an assessment you're assessing the roadway um, if you're in the back with the patient of course that's when you would begin your ongoing assessment uh, on the patient of course notice notify your dispatcher that you are en route <clears throat> to the receiving facility um, if you're in the back with the patient check your interventions um, double check um, you know oxygen flow make sure your your tanks still good um, stuff like that focus on the patient not a rider even if you're driving your focus should be on the road not the person in the passenger seat um, always make sure that nothing in your cab uh, is bringing your focus away from driving same for being in the back make sure nothing is taking away from your focus on the patient drive prudently um, you know drive defensively not offensively if uh, you're in the back keep your driver informed on the patient status especially if it starts to take a turn for the worse that way the driver knows to expect um, that you know they may be, you may be upgrading to a, um, a priority or emergent uh, transport report to the receiving facility as soon as the patient care permits um, you know if you have to pull over because an intervention is failing and you need your your partner's help as soon as your patient care and your patient status allows you need to get to the receiving facility as soon as possible <clears throat> always continue assessments on your patient your assessment doesn't stop until your patient is off your stretcher and you're giving over patient care to another provider en route to the station at the hospital or station clean and inspect the ambulance and everything in it um, if you've got dried blood everywhere that's not exactly going to instill uh, much trust in your patient uh, in your patient so so always keep your ambulance clean plus it's just more professional that way always make sure to wash your hands remember this is your first line defense against any infection radio dispatch let them know where you're at again always wear your safety belt um, most accidents occur within one mile of home or their destination you never know what's gonna happen when you pull out of your station or pull into your station um, always have your seatbelt just to be safe of course refuel is needed um, you know if you get to about the half a tank mark you might want to refuel especially if you're in a rural area because uh, you never know uh, where your next transport is going to take you so be sure you, you've always got adequate uh, fuel in your vehicle <clears throat> This ends our lesson on ambulance operations. If you have any questions, please direct them towards your instructor.